I think that's what it means. I mean, if, this, if it was to go, there'd be a big void in people's lives on a Saturday afternoon. Wrexham Football Club is turning 150, and a return to the Football League would be the perfect way to celebrate. Stumbling in the fifth tier of English football after years of relegations, suspect owners and money troubles, the North Welsh side are hoping their seventh season in the conference is their last. While things haven't gone to plan on the pitch this season, they've never been better off it. With the club now debt-free and in the hands of the Wrexham Supporters Trust, all fans have to worry about is how they're going to get out of this league. We're the Wrexham Supporters Trust are the governing body of uh, the football club. Uh, we own the football club 100%. Three quarters of a million pound in debt uh, we took on and we managed to uh, clear that debt in just 18 months, which was a, a fantastic achievement. Uh, so what state is the club in currently? Uh, we're currently debt-free. Um, We've just got our running costs, uh, the deficit from uh, the, uh, the season that's just finished. Uh, obviously there, there was a little bit of a deficit there, but we'll readjust and reassess and uh, uh, find the funds. Originally formed in 2002 to help then manager Dennis Smith bring in new players, the supporters just soon realised there was a bigger problem. Uh, but with the takeover of the football club by Mark Gutman, uh, it was I soon realised that um, the ground had been sold and it was agreed that the money should be going to save the football club. It, it became Wrexham Supporters Trust and uh, that's what it's been ever since. And We've raised funds uh, throughout that time. We've tried to help the club in certain areas, uh, but uh, owners didn't really want to uh, uh, set up a share scheme where we could purchase shares to uh, uh, have a say in the running of the football club. Mark Gutterman was the start of a string of bad owners at the club. And after Alex Hamilton took over, the club's entry into administration saw them relegated to League Two. Despite new ownership, worries on and off the field continued, and in 2008, Wrexham's 87-year stay in the Football League was ended. Talk about this in a second. Wrexham are out of the Football League. They've lost by two goals to nil this season. After struggling to find their feet in their Gary first Hooper few seasons the in the conference, half, things started to pick up. But with just one automatic promotion spot, they are yet to conquer the playoffs. After losing to Luton at the semi-final stage in consecutive seasons, their biggest heartache came in 2013 when they lost in the final to fellow Welsh club Newport. A disappointing 17th place finish followed, but despite that, the club is on the up. I think the most pleasing thing about everything is that the club now is debt free. Uh, all the debts have been paid off, we're running on a level footing so to speak. I think the board is very diversified, you know, and I think they've got it right at that level. Uh, the only one thing we need to do now is get out of this league and get into the new one. But no, I think since uh, the trust have taken over the club, I think it's, the club has run brilliantly. As I said, we've been very close to going up the twice, but let's just hope, as I said, we can move forward. It's difficult at this moment in time where we are. Uh, I'd like to say in the Football League, we've had a shadow of a doubt. Uh, if we, and the sooner we can get up, I think the sooner we can progress and at least uh, achieve get into League One pretty quick. Every penny goes into the football club. Uh, Every board member buys a season ticket. Uh, if they don't buy a season ticket, then they pay for the games that they go to. Everybody goes in the boardroom, they pay for, uh, for that. All tickets are paid for by uh, everybody who uh, uses them. Although the club is now safe in the hands of the supporters' trust, it wasn't all plain sailing. We put an offer together, uh, we put it to um, uh, Jeff Moss and Lee Roberts. Glyn Dewar came on board. They, they agreed to, uh, Mr. Moss and Mr. Roberts agreed to uh, purchase, uh, sell the stadium uh, to uh, the Glyndor University, uh, which left the road clear for us to take on the run of the football club. It took a bit of time to do it, uh, because mainly because um, of debts that weren't paid the previous season. Um, uh, they were paid through the season ticket money at the beginning of uh, the 2011-12 season. Um, and then the conference put a bond on us um, of a quarter of a million. Uh, fans uh, came forward and managed to raise the funds to cover the cost of the bond, uh, which is a marvellous uh, effort by everyone concerned. Um, the trust as a board, we couldn't have done anything, uh, or as an organisation, couldn't have done anything about uh, paying the bond at the time uh, because uh, we were constituted. Um, but. Uh, the fans came forward and, and did an absolute sterling job in, uh, in saving the football club. With no investors, the club is now wholly dependent on fans' money. 
but the link has never been stronger. Fundraisers, ticket sales and sponsorships are all paramount if the club is to survive. And despite a drop in attendances due to a poor season this year, the community aspect of the club is still growing. It's like more of a togetherness, I suppose. More between uh, the supporters, the trust, uh, players, if you like, the staff. Uh, and I think that you know, we do a lot more to get Rex out into the community as well. You know, and that's not to say that PBC didn't, because players did go out and do presentation out, but that's what it seems to be at the moment. And um, hopefully they'll go from strength to strength. You know, and the club will carry on and hopefully in the near future get back to where everybody thinks it should be. We've done all sorts of events, we've just recently done a parachute jump, in fact we had five members uh, uh, of the trust board and um, the football club board and uh, fans uh, uh, jump out of an aeroplane 10,000 feet uh, uh, to try and race funds for the club. Uh, um, we got a Snowden. We're doing the Snowden walk again in the uh, uh, end of June, uh, where fans uh, walk up Snowden to raise funds, and that, that's been a great fundraiser in the past. Um, all sorts of fundraising events, in all honesty, you know, uh, Christmas raffle, uh, quizzes, um, golf days, whatever, any way we can to find uh, to raise funds for the football club to give extra uh, to the budget. We, we will. Another area the club is proud of is its centre of excellence. Despite having the funding taken away after relegation from the league, it continues to produce new talent. Well, I think, I think Wrexham still got, got a future. Good future. I mean, I work with the younger lads along with Andy Davis, you know, and the, the lads have a centre of excellence to do uh, a remarkable job with youngsters, youngers, and the sevens coming right up to the ones where we have the youth. And I think the future from Wrexham, looking from that side of it, it's quite bright in terms of young players who think of progress is the first team. Um, but sometimes you need success, you know, yesterday if you like, because we need to progress into the Football League. And uh, as I said, the sooner we get back in the Football League, the better we can, we can take it from there then and see where we are and where we're about to go. Working alongside charities is one of the ways the club gets back to the community. Combat Stress, a charity that specialises in the treatment and support of British Armed Forces veterans with mental health problems, is one of them. The fact that they're doing with allowing us to come here to raise money for the Combat Stress today, absolutely wonderful. Last year they allowed us to come here and we raised 15,700 for, for Combat Stress. So this year, hopefully, it goes up and, and the money we raised all goes far to it. And obviously the club has charity partners as well. Uh, before I mentioned the motorbikes, I mentioned the Wales Air Ambulance because that's where I work. Uh, and they've been very, very good with us. But obviously with combat stress coming here today, uh, I think it's brilliant. But that, that's the involvement you get, I think, with it being in the community. Everything is in the community. And the club uh, are moving forward that way to embrace everybody at the football club. And as I said, having them here today, uh, I think it's fantastic. It's a great course. As another season draws to an end, the club begins a new era with newly appointed manager Kevin Wilkin. Wilkin joined from fellow conference side Nuneaton after player boss Andy Morell left in February and is currently taking a closer look at his squad ahead of building his own side for next season. You know, people have made me feel very welcome. I had a terrific reception um, on Saturday, which is, which is very, very kind of people. And uh, you know, now I now need to get down to the hard work and, and start getting some results on the board and, and, and taking us forward. You know, it's been good in the press that I've said it's a sleeping giant waiting to be woken. Um, it is, you know, you look at the passion around the place, the passion of the, the back in 92, 93, whatever it was, that you realise it's about the place. Um, the way, you know, people love the club, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's a great credit to the people around and about that they love the club like they do. And yeah, great appointment. Uh, his interview, uh, when he was interviewed, he gave a great pre presentation. Uh, certainly, uh, everything he said was what uh, we want for a community-owned uh, uh, football club. Well, he's got a tough task, I think we, we all know that, but let's hope he does well, and as well as he did at Nuneaton, and the club will still carry on moving forward. With the new man in place and celebrations for their 150th year underway, Joey tells us what he thinks Wrexham Football Club means to the town. Oh, it means uh, Wrexham Football Club, it means it's a focal point for supporters. I mean, look at the people here today, um, and all these previous seasons, it's the one place where you can go, and have it together, as we said, in terms of supporting the, supporting the club, getting out of the house, 
not. Even as a family thing as well, being the lockdown for the kids. And uh, I think that's what it means. I mean, if, this, if it was to go, there'd be a big void in people's lives on a Saturday afternoon.